Hi, I'm Lily. Today I'm going to show you how I make my miniature abandoned gothic church from scratch and by hand. I've used this miniature set for my last stop motion animation called This Too Shall Pass. If you haven't seen it yet, I'm going to put a link above and in the description below. This miniature set took me in total 250 hours to make. 50 hours for design, research, development, 180 hours to make it, and another 20 hour-ish to age it and transform it into an abandoned church. So there's a lot to cover today in this tutorial, so let's get started. To design this church, I spent lots of time looking at images and references to figure out how I'm going to include lots of different details and features of church that I liked into my own design. One thing that was really helpful during this process was to build a rough mock-up of the church to figure out what's going to be the right height, the width, and I kept cutting it out, tipping it back in. So the, the version you see here is barely holding together because it's been retaped so many times. It's just random bits and bobs that I found around my workshop that I taped together and that just helped me a lot to figure out the proportion, the volume, the position of everything. I hope you appreciate the detail of my little pew out of toilet paper roll. Now I went back to my sketching paper and start to draw every wall. Once I was happy with the design and proportion of each windows and ornaments, I took some graphic paper to go into a bit more details on each uh, ornament and each window surround. Then I placed a tracing paper over it and taped it in place. I went over every line with my pen and then I folded the tracing paper, copied on the other side and cut it with an X-Acto knife. And here you go, I've got a little template. Then I've started to work with Superscopy, any type of polymer clay will do. I passed it through the pasta machine quite a few times and then I started working on the thicker layer that you can get out of the pasta machine. I place it onto baking paper, apply my template on top of it and then remove the excess with the X-Acto blade. I've cut out all the little detail and then remove the tracing paper. Then I use my sculpting tool to go around every line and smooth them up. I repeat the whole process again, this time with a thinner layer of clay and I apply my template on top of it and I cut out more than what I previously cut. I remove the tracing paper delicately and then place it on top of the other one. Then I use my sculpting tools to go around every line and I also use the X-Acto knife to just remove clay when needed or add it some. It took quite some time to make sure I blend both layers together. I kept adding detail, layers, all around the edges as well. So there you go, you have the main one, which is a wall ornament, and then the window. I follow the same principle for the window, but as you can see, I've placed it onto a piece of plywood, 12 mm thick, so I knew that this would later on slide into the wall opening much more easily. Then I cook it for half an hour in the oven and start to make mold. So I glue it onto a piece of cardboard, build up some walls with cardboard and the hot glue gun. Then I mixed up some silicone. I use different types of silicone. This one I can easily recommend is the Smooth On that I just wrote underneath because it's set up really quickly. I mix my silicone, pour it into the mold and let it set. Once it was completely set, I remove the walls, take out the silicone and trim the edges. Then I can fill it up with some fast cast resin. Half an hour later, when it was completely set, I can sand the edges and trim it with the X-Acto knife. And I repeat the same process for every windows, every detail. Yes, it took some time, but it looks gorgeous at the end of it and it looks very different when it's made by hand than if it was 3D printed. So now I start to work on the column. First, I use the baking paper and a hot glue gun to apply some glue and place four wooden stick on top of it. As the glue cools down, you can remove it from the baking paper and trim the glue out. Then I start building up my column, first with a triangle of basil wood, and I apply a thicker stick of basil wood in front of it. Then I've glued the four thinner stick on the sides, and I've added a piece of basil wood on top and a bottom of the column. Then I hot glue it onto a piece of plywood. If you look at image reference of column, they were usually built with blocks 
of stones on top of each other and you have a line that separate them so I wanted to reproduce this effect on my balsa wood it's such a soft wood that you can just mark it with a metal ruler or use the exacto knife then I apply some polymer clay on the base and the top of the column and start sculpting it I kept going until I had a nice design that I like and I've also created a top column that is smaller and thinner to go above the main column. Here's a column in little detail and the top one as well. Then I made a mold with silicone. You actually don't need to bake the polymer clay. You can just make the mold as it is. And I repeat the same process for everything. So for the outer, you have the main central window. I needed only one of these ones, so I didn't make a mold for it. Then the side windows in the altar, I made a copy in resin of those one. For the rest of the church, you have four windows and then four wall ornaments. I also created more ornaments for underneath. Then you have the column. I think I probably had 14 of them or something like this. Then the smaller column for above and more detail ornaments for the wall. So for the base of my set, I reused an old base. As you can see, it had many lives already and I'm gonna give it yet another one. I always recycle and reuse whatever I can. Not only is it more sustainable, but it saves a lot of money. So I just cut to fit the layout that I wanted with the jigsaw. And I've cut some extra plywood to extend the set and some extra studs. Then I've placed some leftover studs, bits and bobs underneath to hold it in place. I used the nail gun to attach them together. I've extended the back of the floor for the outer area and also raised it on studs. As you can see, it doesn't really look pretty at that point, but it doesn't really matter because no one is going to see underneath. Then I just give it a quick sand, fill the holes with wood filler, let it set and then sand it down. And just to make the whole thing look cohesive, I apply some black gesso throughout. For the walls, I've cut some 12mm plywood. Then I've copied each component of my sketch into the plywood. I've also reused the curved arch that I used initially for sculpting my windows and used them as templates so I can just copy them onto the new plywood. Then I took the measurement for my sketch and copied it onto the plywood. I cut the opening out with the jigsaw. Then I wanted to glue some 2mm craft foam onto my plywood and I used some contact adhesive or contact cement and I apply coat onto the plywood and at the back of the foam and let it set roughly 5 minutes until it stops being tacky. This stinks like hell so I recommend doing it outside and then I just place them against each other and I have a good bond throughout. That foam will be useful later on so I can carve my bricks into it. Then I turn the piece upside down, remove the extra foam and hot glue the top of my windows into it. Then I start to build the bottom part of my windows. I could have sculpted the whole thing, but that will require much more silicone, much more resin, so it's much more expensive and less sustainable. So I decided to do it that way, using lots of different bits and bobs of basil wood to build up all the details. Now I needed to cut some column in half and I wanted to invest in a table saw but like many crafters I've got storage issues so I decided to invest into the smallest table saw I can find. This one is super cute and actually more efficient than what I thought but the only thing I didn't know is how much the blade come out of the table and as you see it doesn't go deep enough or not as much as I wish but there's always a way around it. So then I start to position my walls and pull them in place and then I realized actually there's a problem. I don't know how but I messed up my measurements and there were not enough space around the windows for the surrounds. So I realized I need to make the set wider. So I've just added some sheets of plywood all around and used the nail gun to hold them in place. Then I reassemble everything together place my column and check that I have enough space this time. Then I went around every column with a pen of different colors than previously to mark them up. And I started building up the altar because I wanted it to be elevated. So as you can see, I used some scrap of plywood 
pile them up, use the nail gun to hold it in place, use all the scrap you can get because nobody will ever see it, so you might as well. I kept going with the wall ornament as well, with some bits of buzzwood in different thicknesses, some of the resin ornament I've sculpted earlier. I marked up the bricks onto the foam with a permanent marker. And I've also marked the top arch to know how far I need to carve my bricks and add some texture onto the wall. Then I went outside with the wood burning tool, mask and gloves, and I started to carve the bricks into the foam. Then to add texture, I've mixed some good old PVA with some sand. Any sand will do, this one is just normal rough build sand. Mix it up together apply it throughout. Logically it will like to go directly into the groove so what I did is just apply it thin enough so I can see the line and then with the sculpting tool I remove all the sand that got into those grooves and let it set completely. Now for the top part of my church I went back to my initial sketch, use a tracing paper to copy my arches, copy them with a permanent marker on a piece of plywood, cut them with the jigsaw, and start assembling it. So there is five millimeter plywood for the arches and nine millimeter plywood for the walls. Got the side parts of my ceiling and now I'm gonna build the top part. For that, I've got a larger arch to connect both walls together. Then I've placed a piece of 12 millimeter plywood on top and use the nail gun to hold it in place the main structure of the ceiling is assembled. I tested it out and I wanted to have a tight fit because I didn't want to have any light to go through in between the wall and the ceiling. At that stage everything started to fall apart a bit but it doesn't matter that was just a test run. I realized I needed to add more arches for the top part of the ceiling. I've also started hot gluing the column onto the wall now that the sand texture was completely dry. For the top part of the ceiling, I've done the same than previously. I've glued some 2mm foam, marked the bricks and carved them with the wood burning tool. I've also added some detail with the little ornament I've created early on in copy and resin and a bit of basil wood and I use a super glue to hold everything together and to apply it onto the foam. Now to create the vaulted ceiling. I had my boxes which needed some arches inside of it so I used some foam board 5mm thick and cut some arches into it and I hot glued them into the space. Then I took a piece of warbler. Warbler is a magical thermoplastic which exists in different type. This one is a meshed version. I've started working with this and then later on went back to the original warbler. So whatever warbler you have that will do the job. So I heat it up with a heat gun apply it onto my shape and slowly stretch it and shape it. As long as it's hot, it's soft and you can shape it. If you start to cool down, bring back the heat gun again and warm it up. I've also found it really useful to cut the side so it helps in stretching the warbler. Let it completely cool down and then it holds the shape. Magic! Then you can cut the excess with a scissor. Make sure it's a nice fit. Then I place it into a different area of my ceiling and hot glue it in place. To cover all the edges, I've cut some warbler in strips that are 10 mm wide and 3 mm wide and I warm them up. Once they are heated and soft, they will bond to each other. So that creates a little trim. I warm them up so they're soft apply some glue with a glue gun and then apply my little trim exactly where I want it and sculpt it. As it's still soft, you can sculpt and do whatever you want with it. And I keep adding more trim onto my ceiling to create the cross ribs. So for the top part of my ceiling, I wanted to create the same system, but I didn't have the same access that on the side. So I created a little box of the exact same measurement of the top part of my ceiling, and I created some arch into it and hot glue them in place. Then I repeat the same process as before using this type, the normal type of warbler. So as you can see, any type of warbler will do. And I just took my time to really stretch it and shape it however I want. 
Once it was cold, I trim it out and hot glue it in place. Adding those little trim with warbler was brilliant to cover the edges, very handy. I've also made some bigger trim, this time with six layers of warbler, going from 30 millimeter wide to three millimeter wide, and I warm it up and stick them on top of each other. I've used those trim to cover most of the big arches. As long as it's soft and warm, you can shape it however you want. Now going back to the base of my set, I've applied some contact cement or contact adhesive and I've applied it as well on the back of a 5mm EVA foam, then I've bond them together. This is how far I got at that point. Then to attach the column, I've started drilling the ceiling with a drill bit that is slightly larger than a wooden dowel so it can go in and out very easily. I drill into my column this time the exact size of the dowel. That way I knew the wooden dowel will stick into the column and stay there. Then I place my column onto the set, mark it up with a permanent marker, drill into the board and try to assemble everything together. I've also created a fourth wall which have the same ornaments, same detail as the rest of the church. And on the other side, I've created the front of the church. I needed that shot to be the first opening shot of my animation. Now that I had all my components ready, I've started applying some white gesso throughout to prime it. Then two coats of acrylic paint. And then I start to add different shades to make it more interesting with a rough brush. Then I seal it with a clear matte sealer. Then I've done some grey washes. I like to do mine quite thick and remove all the excess with a wet paper towel. I've done a brown wash for the base as I wanted the pavement to be really dirty in that area. Now you see the wash make a significant difference and that is just when it's still wet. It goes darker as it dries. Once I was happy with it, I dry brush with the white for the highlights and then I seal with a clear matte varnish. For the floor, I took some time to design it and to create a different pattern and something interesting to look at on tracing paper. I've also used some marker just to see how the colors and patterns will show with different colors on it. Then I've taped this template onto my board and used the X-Acto knife to cut it out. Then I went over every line with a wood burning tool and same as previously, add some texture with PVA and sand. Paint the whole thing. Add a dirty wash with some dark grey and seal it with a clear matte varnish. For the windows, I turn my walls upside down and apply a sheet of plastic onto it. I mark the outside with a permanent marker, cut it out with a scissor, remove the protective layers on both sides of the plastic sheets and then apply some super glue as little as you can because there's always a risk with the super glue that it will whiten the plastic. Then I've placed some graphic paper on each side of the windows, use a thin permanent marker and mark some line which will become the window bar. I'm not sure if window bar is the right word but as you can see it's quite effective. I repeat the same thing for the main windows in the altar area and then I start assembling. So as you can see, every component is removable so I can access for my animation with the camera from different angles. Then I've added the walls and I screw the walls together as well as into the studs in the base. Kept going with the other wall. Then I placed my column. Added the ceiling. And slide the front of the church. Now I'm going to talk about the leap here. First, I draw them on a piece of graphic paper. I use a tracing paper on top of it and a marker pen. And then I place my template below a piece of baking paper so I can see through. And I use some 3D paint. My favorite brand is PBO Sand Relief. And I went over every line. And then I can move my template underneath the baking paper, slide it and do the same thing again. And if you happen to have a design that is not the same from one side to another, you can just flip it around and keep going with the other side. 
Now when it comes to the wooden part, I went back to my sketch, go over it with some tracing paper and a permanent marker, create a new template, copy it onto a piece of 5mm thick basil wood, cut it, sand it down. I've also cut some extra part for the seating in the back. And then I hot glue everything together. I've added two coats of diluted brown acrylic paint and once my paper sand relief was completely dry you can actually trim it with a scissor or an exacto knife so it's not perfectly straight don't worry you can trim it later then I've glued it with some super glue and that was very fiddly because it's not sturdy enough to hold its shape and I keep getting my fingers stuck in super glue so that was a bit tricky this part then I've applied a dark brown to create a wash Remove the excess with a wet paper towel. Then I apply a clear gloss varnish to create this stained wood effect that you have in old furniture. Now for the altar, I've done the same thing. I've created a template on graphic paper for the front and the side. So once I made those decisions, it was easy for me to measure each component and to copy them in basil wood. For the top part, the bottom and I've also copied the ornament as previously done with the pebbles and relief. Then I use some leftover foam board that I glue on top of each other to create the core of the altar. I've covered the whole thing with some sheets of basil wood. I've sandwiched all the parts together for the top and bottom elements and then I hot glue them together. I kept adding more pieces to add some nice detail. I've painted, hot glued the ornaments and done some wash. For the door, I've done the same thing again, tracing paper, permanent marker to define my shape and copy it onto a piece of card. I've aged some thin sheets of basil wood with a screwdriver. I cut them into strips and hot glue them onto my piece of card. I create another layers for the top part of the door and then hot glue everything together. I've painted and dirty washed the whole thing. And I also create the little ornament with paper sand relief and create a door knocker with a black disc that I found in my piles of bits and bobs, a little bead and a little ring of wire. Now for those of you who are still awake and watching, thank you, I'm going to talk about the pendant light. To create those I've used two shapes in warbler, one thinner than the other. And I've used some clear warbler and black warbler. For the thicker part of buzzer wood I've used some square warbler. So first I warm up the clear warbler and I wrap it around my first piece of basil wood. Keep warming it up so it bonds to each other and you can go all around the shape. And once I was happy with it, I let it to cool down. And start to work with the other piece. I warm up the black warbler, wrap the top of my shape. As it was still soft at that stage, I used the exacto knife to cut the edges. Then I warm up another piece of wool block and this time I cover the bottom part of my shape and let it cool down as well. Then I went back to my first component and carefully removed the clear wool block out of the wooden piece. Once I knew it was coming in and out easily, I put it back in and start to work on the black parts. So now as you can see, I've got some lines and references to know how far I need to cut my pointed arch. I cut four of them and then warm up the black warbler and carefully apply it onto the clear warbler. It was a bit fiddly and tricky to work with but as it's still soft you can keep shaping it and use some sculpting tools to really create the curve you want. You can warm it up again if you start to go cold or if it hasn't bounded correctly to go all around the shape. Now I let that part cool down and went back to the other part. I can remove the top and bottom bits, cut the excess with a scissor, Use a nail file to smooth the edges and assemble all the bits together. Ta-da!
Now, I went back to those little discs that I found in my workshop and drilled some holes together. They would be good to hide the transition when the cables of the lanterns go into the ceiling. I've also drilled a hole at the top of my lantern to allow for the LEDs to get in. And I hot glue all my components together. I drilled into the middle of each of the vaulted ceiling pass some micro LED, roughly six of them per lantern, through the hole and through my little black disc. Then I pass those light into the little lantern. And to cover the transition, I use another piece of black wool black that I warm up and wrapped around the wires. I recently discovered something really cool, gray tack, and it came really handy on this task. So I put a little bit of this gray black tack on top of my lights, press it into the hole so it holds everything firmly together. Test it out, all my lenses were connected, and I can just switch them on and off from the little battery pack. As you can see from above, a very simple installation, and I've just added a bit of duct tape. I've repeated the same thing for the altar, and I make sure I had a separate battery pack because I wanted to be able to remove, for example, the ceiling or the altar without having some cable in between, so they were already completely independent. At that stage, the set was ready to shoot, so I start shooting all my animation, and when I was happy with that, then I start to transform this into an abandoned church. To do so, I use some old leftover of plaster that I try to break into the tiny pieces possible. And I use sculpt them all because that set really quickly. I mix the sculpt them all with water, add some paint to color it, and add the bit of plaster to add some texture. And I place some blobs of this mixture onto a piece of baking paper. I've also taped some bits of timber on the side to create some corner. I broke some piece of basil wood by hand to make sure they look like old plank that have been really torn apart. I've placed some bits into my bits of scotomol before it sets and quickly paint them with some diluted brown paint. I've also cut lots of other length of basil wood and soaked them into diluted brown paint as they will be useful later to create the rafters. Then I've done some washes and start by some dirty gray washes, then apply some brown darker washes on the bottom part of those piles and I let them dry for a day. In the meantime, I start to cut some opening in the ceiling. I wanted to avoid having a clean line. I wanted some rugged edges as much as possible. I remove the plywood part and then start to press and bend the warbler part inside. And at that point, it needs to look distressed. So really about stretching it, damaging it to create something that looks a bit realistic. Then I've covered those edges with some frog tape and start apply some brown dark paint because the last thing you want to see through this opening is some clean plywood or white foam board, for example. Once that was dry, I start to create a template with aluminum foil to define how much surface I need to cover and fill. I use this template as reference and start to build my rafters with the bits of basswood soaked in paint that are not dried. And I use the hot glue gun to attach them together and I keep building it up my rafters until it looks rough and broken. Then I hot glued them in place and I kept adding more pieces of basil wood. I've repeated the same thing for the different openings. Now for the broken windows, initially when I start shooting, I realized the plastic sheet that I blew initially was too clean and not realistic with old windows. Adding this piece of plastic from packaging, it really made a difference. To broke those windows up, first I went through both layers of plastic with a standard knife and cut them out in rough kind of fashion. This was my first try, by the way. I removed the top coats of the flexible plastic and start making more dent into it. If you do it by hand, be very careful with your own finger when you do this. And at that stage, I was trying to create as much damage as possible to not have a clean line. If you look at images and reference for broken glass, you can see that they have similar pattern to spider web. So you have all those lines that cross in the middle and then you have like different circles going around. So I tried to replicate that with the standard knife. Then I tape the plastic sheets back on it. And there you go, some broken glass. 
and I've done the same thing for every single window. Then I've reassembled my set together. Now it's about making sense of how the church was destroyed. So let's say the roof has collapsed here. That means there's going to be lots of rubble and rubbish underneath directly. Same with the side one. It needs to make sense. If you just put broken wood everywhere, it doesn't exactly look realistic. So you need to tell a story with how the church was destroyed. So I knew where my rubbish and rubble will add up but also where some water damage will be. So I knew that underneath this opening, for example, I'm gonna do more washes and including some green washes to create the effects of the water damage. So that's what I started with, some diluted dark acrylic paint, and I removed the excess with wet paper towel. That green wash alone made a significant difference. By then, my little piles of sculptor were dry, so I started placing them up, and I like having a bit of flexibility and move them around until I was really happy with the layout. I made the decision that if the roof has collapsed in this area, the pew underneath will probably collapse as well. So that's why I broke it by hand and started piling the parts of wood on top of each other. I kept adding more rubble, more bits and bobs to try to make it look realistic, like everything has fall on top of each other. Then I hot glue them together for stability. I've also made sure I painted the bare basil wood so it blended with the rest of the dark wood. I've added more broken plank. I made another mix of sculptor mold, this time with some darker paint to it, and I filled the gap underneath each of my uh, rubble pile. I press my dark mix underneath rubbles and then I use, use a wet brush to blend everything together. Then I start doing more washes to make it more dirty and old and slowly but surely the picture emerged. I needed lots of greens and foliage to create the final look. I've used most of the three boxes of the green vine, one box of the dead vine and plenty of other bits and bobs. I wanted to have a diversity of texture, shape and colors to really create the realistic look. I bought all of them from Model Scenery Supplies in UK. They are not sponsoring me in any shape or form, but they have a fantastic range, so I thought it was worth mentioning this company. I start to apply some clear PVA and add a little bit of turf and different texture onto it, remove the excess with a vacuum. I didn't put any holes on it because I was vacuuming all sorts of things that hasn't been stuck properly anyway. Then I've used lots of the green vine, pressing it into place and then used the hot glue gun to make sure it stay there. I kept building it up with a different kind of foliage. And last but not least, I wanted some cobweb. To create that, I've used some hair nets. The only one I found were white, which looks a bit too clean. So I just cut the elastic off, dipped them into diluted brown wash to make it dirty. And once it was dry, I just simply apply them onto the vine. And there you go, an abandoned Gothic church. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I am aware that some of you might not have all the equipment, the material, the space, or the time that I have to create something like this. But if this tutorial inspires you to make something of your own, it doesn't have to be huge and overcomplicated or something. But if you enjoy the creative process and you create something that brings you some joy, that's brilliant. And at the end of the day, it's a little thing that matters anyway. So next time I'm going to show you some behind the scenes of my stop motion animation and until then take good care of yourself.